Good evening, those who wander or gather wool. We are back for episode four of our top 10 albums that influenced our musical taste. We have given you nine so far. That's top three from each of us. And tonight we're going to dig into our fourth album that influenced us. Hopefully you're getting something out of this. You're learning some new music and checking out some new stuff. If not, maybe we're uh, hitting your sweet spot. Who knows? But um, give, you, yeah. give you the old four horsemen. There you uh, go. Can I be Arn Anderson? <laughs> Arn was always my favorite. He was awesome. He was. Yeah. He's going to work that arm over until you couldn't use it anymore. That's right. That's right. All right. Metalhead, we we keep relying on you first every night. Are you good to go? I If I have to, I mean, I'll, I'll try. You do, because I can't <laughs> change this slide, Joe. <laughs> because there is. Show me the slide. And there is. There is no rest for the wicked. Hey, yes. <laughs> see what I did there. I did. It was good. Um, uh, yeah, we could have worked on some cues and made it a little better, but you know, <laughs> it still worked. Once we all so, get our jobs and do this full time, <laughs> we will do that. Mm -hmm. So Ozzy Osbourne, the rest for the wicked. We're into 1988. So, uh, this is sixth grade for me. Um, I had just started getting into heavier music. Uh, Guns N' Roses, of course, was huge at this time. And for me, for, for heavy music, Ozzy was really my first huge obsession. Um, for some reason, it, it made something in my brain click, and I was just all about Ozzy. I wanted everything he had ever done. I got super into Black Sabbath, and uh, I got my first CD player when I was 15, and my very first CD was a double set of Black Sabbath. We sold our soul for rock and roll. <laughs> uh, and just Ozzy has always been a favorite of mine. And that will probably never change. Uh, it's I've been lucky enough to see him twice. Once solo, once with Sabbath. And uh, yeah, it, it, this album also was the... His first album was Zach Wild. So... That was pretty crazy. And, you know, I've loved Zach ever since mm -hmm. Black Label and everything he does. Mm -hmm. So it, this is this is one of my favorite Aussie records. And it just this is the one that was out and the videos were hitting MTV at this time. So uh, it just hit me at the right age. And this is this is my Aussie album. Yeah, oh, yeah. I could see where that's or some of your roots took hold for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I was thrilled. I was at a show recently with you uh, yeah. to see Ozzy and I'm glad that I got to see him live and I was worried because he was so old, but man, he really got around. He was fantastic. And Zach was amazing. So I'm glad I got to see that. You know, as, as frail as he seems right now, even I bet if you put him in front of a microphone and he sang, he would probably sound amazing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's got one of those distinctive voices that just sounds so good, and it's instantly recognizable. It's wonderful. His singing voice just never goes away, too. Mm. It's so weird. Yeah. Well, he sold his soul to the devil. So <laughs> That's what it is. Sold his soul for rock and roll. <laughs> there you go. He was eating all those bat heads on stage. He was getting all that <laughs> blood transfusions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's a great choice. Yeah, very think, great choice. Yeah, that's why I wore the Batman shirt. <laughs> ah, but doom nice boom. <laughs> it's not. I, that's it. No. I'm removing you from the studio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great choice. Great choice. All right, my number four is Iron Maiden. Number of the Beast. Yes, nice. So I remember being a young lad of 11 or 12 at the time and having my brothers were older and had lots of cool music. And, um, there was a vinyl and I would pop that thing on and sit and listen and read the lyrics to run to the Hills and instantly just in love with that. And that really was so influential and in not only my musical taste to, to, you know, get more into heavy music, but they, Iron Maiden and, and Rush before them talked about mythology 
mm-hmm. and these old stories and poetry and their mm-hmm. songs were narratives. And that was so cool to me. And I have a love for Samuel Taylor Coleridge today because of Iron Maiden and Rush. And um, anytime you can put a story to music or you can have a song uh, like Run to the Hills that tells a, a terrible history. situation from two sides of history. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so cool and it's so smart. And I love that about them. So I think that Iron Maiden influenced me not only musically, but also what literature wise or poetry wise. So huge influence to a little 11 or 12 year old at the time. So Iron Maiden is my number four and it's number of the beast, but it could have been a number of records because there's so many good things across all of theirs. So that was my entry point. I came to them much later. Um, I did not love them when I was younger, when I was getting into heavy music. And I think it was mostly Dickinson's voice kind of turned me off for some reason. But mm. I've I've come around and I love them now. And that for the same reason, like their stuff is just smart. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Steve yeah. Harris is just an amazing, amazing bass player and songwriter. And their lyrics are always like super smart and intelligent. And yeah, I, they're one of the greats. Yep, for sure. Yeah, these are solid choices. I know. And Tony's, I think, will be sort of in line with what we're talking about. So, you ready? I'm ready. Hit it. Metallica, Master of Puppets, which obviously has seen a resurgence on the uh, Stranger Things vibe. Yeah. But, um, man, so much to say about this, but I'll make it quick. Uh, <laughs> the uh, I remember very distinctly that this was not only like, at the same time, everything else was kind of changing. And I was trying to, I was getting a little more rebellious and metal wasn't something that I had heard a lot of, but then the lyrics were smart to me. I remember somebody, you know, giving me the cassette and um, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe the story that was being told with master of puppets, the, the song, you know, but then the whole album was awesome. But I remember Back in the day, you beg somebody, if I give you a blank tape, will you make me a copy? You know, <laughs> oh yeah, get your TDK out. Let's go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then I would draw the cover myself, you know. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that one in particular, I remember not hearing a word of class for probably the full week <laughs> and just write writing out all of the lyrics from the, the case that the guy had and uh, into my notebook. So I had them. And that's you know, later on would come to be that lyrics are super important to me, but Mm -hmm. yeah, master puppets. And then, I mean, that folds right into what you guys have because Ozzy and I, and Iron Maiden, those were my poor parents. That was, you know, I think I was just really getting into music and less into homework. Mm -hmm. And so my, my grades were (laughs) suffering, but I think, you know, coming from this strong Catholic household, it was like, Oh my gosh, number of the beast. And (laughs) we need an intervention for Tony. Um, so, uh, but at least Master of Puppets had a bunch of crosses on it. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. But then the uh, obey your master isn't said necessarily <laughs> a calming voice. But um, yeah. So, but I mean, it, and then they're just technically, I think they're awesome mm-hmm. musicians and they've obviously come to be one of the biggest bands in the world. So, um, yeah, man, Metallica, Master of Puppets, it's hard to beat for me. Mm-hmm. Well, if you ask the internet, Lars Lars. Ulrich is the worst drummer ever. So he's just very basic and repeats a lot. (laughs) He does. He gets the job done clearly because they've sold a few records and they sell out a few shows. I have no problem with it. There's a guy though that kind of looks like him and does the faces, and he does every song as if Lars was playing drums. Yes, priceless. (laughs) And I bet Lars likes it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, questions for another day. But would would Metallica be? better with a better with a different drummer you know I they would know. be different and they probably right. would not be as huge as they are because yeah. a lot of that yeah. was him he's the businessman yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i think they're That's fine true. the way they are and I they're agree. fantastic so great choices right. look at us we are 12 in and not one repetition so excellent job let's see tomorrow we will be back with our fifth choice let's see if we cross over Or if we have any heavy metal, who knows? Find out tomorrow. Bye now.